Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm going to take you through the cards that make up our magnificent armour expansion. Um, let me just read you the text. In armour with my sword in hand, I am the boldest in the land. I can take most any blow and put on a mighty show. Queases, greaves, cuirass mine, pauldrons, cannons, gauntlets shine. None can touch me. I am a god of war and you're of mortal sod. We catch his sword between our hands as Fiore's art demands. Stab him, grab him, throw him down, open his helm and go to town. We get behind him as we pass and stab him where? In the arse. So, the cards that come with the armour expansion. Okay, these two cards. This is what's called the armour accoutrement card and what this does is it informs your opponent that you are in armour. It, it's really just so there's something on the table that indicates that you're going to be using the armour expansion pack. Okay, uh, This card is just the thing that exists in the back of the box so that it's basically what would be on the back of the um, card box if we had printed card boxes. We are working on finding a supplier that will do print on demand card boxes. Now, the cards themselves, the ones with these backs, these beautiful armoured sword backs, are the guards and these guards there are five of them, are the guards as Fiore shows in the armoured longsword section of his magnificent manuscript. There are only five instead of the six shown in the manuscript because in your ordinary deck, um, the uh, Porta de Ferro Lamezzana, which is an armoured combat guard as well, is also already there in your ordinary deck. And remember that you can only use the armour expansion pack with an ordinary deck. So. Um, you'll be using these actions in combination with the actions in your uh, ordinary dueling deck. Um, so we just added, for strikes, we've just added a whole load of thrusts because that is the most important blow to be able to make in armour. Okay? So these thrusts work pretty much the same as the ones in the ordinary decks. Now, parries are a little bit more complicated. They are Madrito or Reverso, and they operate according to the same um, eligibility rules as Madrito and Reverso strikes in the ordinary decks. And the sword point or sword hilt symbols in the corner are there so you know which of the half sword remedies can follow on from a parry. So if you make a parry, say a Madrito parry here, you need to know which of these um, half sword remedies you can make. Now the half sword remedies have the moon and night symbol on them and if these symbols match up and make an actual sword you can play it, it is eligible. If they do not, it is not eligible. This is so that we get a degree of realism, so the actions that follow on from a Madrid or parry in the card game are the same as the ones that would follow on from a Madrid or parry in real life. So, those are the parry cards dealt with. Let's have a look at the, the counters. Now, in our recent update to this deck, we've added the Celeritas symbol because to play a reversal counter or a Mandrito counter, you need to have a Celeritas advantage because these work exactly like counter attacks. So your opponent attacks you, you play a Mandrito counter or a reversal counter and that eligibility is determined by these little symbols here. <coughs> As you can see, um, you you could not play the reversal counter from Sagittaria, but you could play a Madrito counter from Sagittaria. There's the symbols that line, that, that match up. Okay, so the counters, because they work exactly like a counter attack, you have to have the um, Celeritas advantage, and uh, your opponent can only counter them by playing the same attack card again. Okay, so he needs to have two of the same card in his hand or be able to recover one from. The discard pile. So he needs to have the um, the same 
attack card again to, to counter the reversal counter or the magical counter and it works exactly like counterattacks do in the regular game. Now, the guards are interesting because they have strength and speed attributes. Okay? Um, Sagittarius, for example, has four um, Celeritas points, which makes it extremely fast because that's exactly what it's for, for throwing fast thrusts. Um, the eligibility works um, from what it can do. These armoured guards, what they can do are the parries and counters that you see in the um, armour expansion packs. You can't do regular strikes from these guards, as you can see by their eligibility symbols. Now, they can be attacked by, well, Sagittarius can be attacked by anything, Serpentina Soprano can be attacked by anything except a Reverse of Fendente, Reverse Serpentina can be attacked by anything, Veracroce by anything, and Croce Bastarda by anything. This is because Serpentina La Soprano is the only one that closes the line. However, if you are standing there in Breve La Serpentina and somebody does clonk you on the head with a sword using an ordinary strike, all that happens is they get to take one card out of your hand and discard it, um, and they get to refresh their hand with one extra blow, or one extra card from their um, their action deck. Um, this is to simulate uh, fatigue, because the whole point about armour is it actually works. So getting hit with a sword when you're in armour, unless it's a, a, an armour combat technique or a thrust to a weak point, is not going to do you very much damage. But enough hits to the, to the helmet, it does tire you out quite a bit. Trust me, I know. Now, let's finish off by having a look at the Strato cards. Now, these are a big part of the Half Sword Remedy cards. They have the same symbols as the Strato cards in the ordinary deck. These come in pairs, as you would imagine. Now, most importantly, um, there was a cock up in the original print run, and these do not match up. If you have the original cards, this symbol should be over on the right, so it matches up. Okay. And as with the Strato cards in the regular game, a perfect counter finishes the game, but an imperfect counter takes you to break off. Um, these actions, of course, all come from Fiore, and you'll notice that, interestingly, at least I think it's interesting, um, there is a mismatch between um, the number of remedies and the number of counter remedies. For example, you have two hooks with pommel, but only one counter to it. And this is deliberate, this is not a printing error. This is because we want to encourage more integration between the dual deck and the armor expansion pack. So for example, you're not confined to half sword counter remedies to do these close quarter plays. Okay, so you can imperfectly counter your um, half sword remedies with um, counter remedies from the regular deck that have the right the symbol on the correct side. You won't get a perfect match, obviously, um, but you will get you will be able to go to break off. So these are hook with point I've dealt with, thrust to throat is countered by elbow push and takedown. Cross guard to throat is countered by pommel strike from below. Lift visor and thrust is countered by left arm break. And there are two lift visor and thrusts. Hook with pommel is countered by parry and thrust. So, that is all the cards in the Armour Expansion Pack, and they are carefully worked out, they do all work. Um, so in the next video, I'll explain how to set up... In the next video, I'll explain how to set up your Armour Expansion Pack with your regular deck, and go through some of the main elements of gameplay and how it's different. Um, thank you for watching, and of course, if you have any questions or difficulties with Audacia in general or the Armour Expansion Pack in particular, please do get in touch. You can find us at audaciagame at gmail.com and audaciagame.com.